Good morning. Well, this has been a challenging week with our scripture passages, uh, and it should be because it is Lent, and today's passage is no less challenging. We are continuing in Luke 20, and let me just jump right into that passage. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be honest in order to trap him by what he said, so as to hand him over to the jurisdiction and authority of the governor. So they asked him, Teacher, we know that you are right in what you say and teach, and you show deference to no one, but teach in the way of God and in accordance with truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But he perceived their craftiness, and he said to them, Show me a denarius. Whose head and whose title does it bear? They said, The emperor's. He said to them, Then give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were not able in the presence of the people to trap him by what he said. And being amazed by his answer, they became silent. One wonderful way of looking at this uh, passage is that you better not try to outsmart Jesus. That's not going to happen. And that's what they were trying to do and they failed. But much, much more importantly, of course, is what we can learn from this passage. And what we learn is not simply that we are called to pay taxes, although that may be part of it, but it is that we are to take a careful accounting of what is God's and what is the nation's, what is the government's, what is outside even of of what is God's, and make sure that we know the difference. And on this uh, Lenten day, I want to talk about a a subject I'd really rather not talk about because I don't want to be accused of being political uh, and I don't want to uh, uh, cause people to be upset. But on the other hand, this is Lent and we have to take a hard accounting of our own selves. And so what I want to talk about today is Christian nationalism. One of the things from the January 6th riot at the Capitol that is so troubling is that Uh, as people are now trying to analyze what happened and figure out who was there and what were their motivations and all that kind of thing, one of the things I keep reading is the only thing that can connect almost all of those people that were there is that they had some connection to Christianity. They were claiming to be Christian, claiming perhaps to act uh, out of the will of God, using Christian symbols. Uh, the, the QAnon shaman, the guy that had the horns and, and the red, white, and blue face, he stood uh, in front of where the Speaker of the House stands, and he offered a prayer, and in that prayer he referenced Jesus uh, right there on the, the floor of, of the House. Uh, and basically what these people have done is they have confused God and uh, country. They don't know the difference. They don't know what is God's and what is the country's. And when Jesus was holding that coin and he said, whose picture and whose title is on it? The picture, of course, was the picture of Caesar. And uh, the title would have said, a Caesar is Lord. And so Jesus is really saying, make sure that you don't make the mistake that the Romans are making. Because the Romans believe that the Caesar uh, was a, a deity and that the religion and the country were essentially the same. Now, what I don't want to do today is point fingers at other people, people who stormed the Capitol or whatever, because that does no good. Except I do want to point fingers at myself, and maybe even in doing so, point a few fingers at you on ways that we confuse our country, and I am assuming that most everybody who is watching this is a citizen of the United States, our country and God, or our country and and our faith. Uh, And we must resist Christian nationalism because that elevates the nation, and by elevating the nation, it naturally uh, de-elevates, if you will, diminishes the role of Christ in our lives. And there's this this wonderful fellow, Samuel Perry, who is a sociologist at the University of Arkansas, uh, but he's not just some egghead um, uh, professor. He is a a committed Christian. Uh, One of his many degrees is from Dallas Theological Seminary, and and if you know that seminary, you know it's a very conservative seminary, so this is not a, uh, a flaming liberal kind of a guy. Um, And when he went to Dallas Theological Seminary, though, he did finish the very top of his class. He's a very smart fella. And as a sociologist, uh, part of his task is to help people, help Christians figure out uh, just what we're talking about today. And he recently wrote uh, an article about 10 indicators that you're seeing uh, Christian nationalism, or in some cases, white Christian nationalism. And I haven't uh, tried to boil down all 10. I just want us to look at a few of them today. And again, I want us to see it not as how bad those people out there are, but how we are influenced by those. And let us use this as a Lenten discipline, maybe, to ask Christ to help excise those uh, from our lives. 
And so uh, one of the things that he says is that uh, uh, white nationalism tends to have an us versus them mentality. Non-Christians, uh, people who aren't part of our culture, become enemies that are to be defeated rather than those for whom Christ died. Uh, we're called to serve those who we see as our enemies, not defeat or dominate them. And yet when we develop these us versus them mentalities, we're much quicker to pick a fight uh, than we are to try to find some way to serve. We need to remember that we are called to build relationships, to offer witnesses to other people uh, who are not Christian. And uh, the response to the enemy is to witness, and to witness not only with our mouths, but to witness with self-serving, sacrificial love. Or se not self-serving, but sacrificial love. Other-serving, sacrificial love, just as Jesus did. We serve, we do not dominate. Another uh, indicator he gives is it's culture versus person. Are we more interested in reforming the behavior of other people or, or having them adopt our culture, our morals, our values, or are we more interested in introducing them to Jesus Christ? And I want to suggest that, yes, when we uh, uh, come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, he is going to change us, and our morality is going to change, and our behavior is going to change. Um, but, but that is for Jesus to do. We need to trust that my job, your job, is to introduce other people to Jesus, not to win them over to your culture or your morality, but introduce them to Jesus. Uh, as a, a pastor once said, and this is a little bit crass, but I think it works, Jesus says that we are to be fishers of people, and so it's our job to catch them, but then it's Jesus' job to clean them. And so our ultimate goal is to introduce people to Jesus, not to be so worried about changing them, to be more like us or to adopt our morals or our values or whatever. Another indicator, contempt for the cross. Now, uh, we wouldn't say we have a contempt for the cross, and, and most Christian nationalists wouldn't. But in fact, if we are so interested in our nation succeeding, our nation winning, and we can't see the difference between Christianity and our nation, then we're not going to have any use for the cross because the cross is losing. The cross is offering ourselves for others, serving others, giving ourselves up for others. Jesus, we are told, of course, in scriptures, while we were yet sinners, while we were enemies of God, that's when Jesus died for us. Jesus lost the battle instead of engaging the battle for us. And in that, of course, saved us. And so we need to recognize that we are to sacrifice ourselves, not for the nation, but we are to sacrifice ourselves for the other, for the enemy. As Jesus said, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Another indicator that many of us fall into, we've heard this all our lives, that there is some connection between Old Testament Israel and and America, and that America has somehow been especially blessed by God. And although that sounds wonderful, there is nothing in Scripture that says that America is specially blessed by God, and there's no connection between America and the Old Testament Israel. America is not the new Israel. What is the new Israel? The new Israel is the church, and the New Testament is absolutely focused on on the church. It's amazing how little talk of politics there is in the New Testament. There's very little talk about Rome, very little talk about Israel. It's on the church. And how is the church to act in the world? And you might say, well, the church is supposed to influence culture, and we are. And, and the church should be a part of the government. And in some ways, uh, maybe not the church per se, but Christians uh, who are called to be part of the government should be. But ultimately, what we see in Scripture is that, that those in government, those in authority were complaining, uh, not that the church or, or, the, or the, the Christians were taking care of the government, but this tiny band of people, just because of who they were, were turning the world upside down. And so we need to go back to that and recognize that it's not our job as Christians or our job as the church to elevate America or to see America as somehow special, but rather we are to see uh, elevate the church and we are to let the church be the ones and, and the way that we react and, and, and live out our lives through the church to transform not merely America, but turn the whole world upside down. And then the final one I want to relate to uh, or want to mention is uh, corollary to this very one. And that is that America is somehow essential uh, or, or central to God's plans. 
Now, does America have a role to play in the world? Absolutely. And scripture is clear that the nations are called to do particular things, and, and each nation is called. But that's what is most important for us to recognize that America isn't special. God loves all nations, and God calls all nations uh, to be a part of, of uh, a good governance, uh, as, as Paul says, that we can live together peaceably and with dignity. Uh, that is the ultimate role of government. Government is to provide justice and fairness and equality to all people and all nations. And so we recognize again that the church is central to this. And so in the church, we don't look at one particular culture or one particular race or one particular nation, but, but of course, as Paul writes, there is neither male nor female, Greek uh, nor Jew, slave nor free. And one way of looking at that is uh, who I am in my own body, there's, that doesn't matter whether I'm male or female. God doesn't care in the church. God doesn't care what nationality I am or what race I am, Greek or Jew. God doesn't care, slave or free, uh, how much money I make, what my social economic status is. None of that matters. But in the church, we are all called together to pay honor, not to Caesar. Caesar is Lord, absolutely not. But to pay honor to Jesus, Jesus who is Lord. And so on this day, as we consider giving to God what is God's and giving to uh, the Caesar, giving to the nation what is the nation, let us not confuse those and let us redouble our efforts to make our allegiance be first and foremost to Jesus and let the allegiance that we have to Jesus affect all of our other allegiances to country, to family, uh, to whatever else we might have allegiances to. Let the allegiance to Jesus be primary. We can do this for one reason and one reason only. And that is because Jesus is not just a historical figure that we read about, but Jesus is with us now. 